So in California, we have a perfect storm of conditions which is making fire more widespread and more intense. Those conditions are human suppression of fire for decades, which means that the trees are more dense than before, climate change, which is making these ecosystems hotter and drier, which kills the trees, makes them more flammable, and finally, the nail in the coffin, the pine beetle in California, which can come in and kill the trees. And this is why we have about 130 million dead trees in California now, which makes them very vulnerable and susceptible to fire. The climate change is induced through greenhouse gas emissions from human activities, and that is causing ecosystems to become hotter and drier and more flammable. So climate change is contributing to the spread and the incidence of wildfire in many ecosystems on the planet. Now this is concerning for a number of reasons. It affects human health. It's hard to breathe the air when it's very smoky, and we're seeing that happen in California and elsewhere. And then finally, it can give rise to what's called a positive feedback cycle. So this is a self-reinforcing effect in which climate dries out these ecosystems and kills the trees, fire becomes more prevalent, which releases the carbon back to the atmosphere as CO2, and that CO2 further contributes to additional climate warming. So we have this positive feedback cycle, which is really concerning on the planet. When we think about fire, we often think about it in a binary sense. It's bad or it's good. It's there or it's not. But it's not that simple. In California and around the West, we know that spring is starting much earlier, sometimes into the winter months. And that has a variety of, of um, effects on how fire behaves. One is the soils become drier earlier because they're not covered with snow. And as you have a decrease in soil moisture, that creates a drying effect on the vegetation. We also know that with increased temperatures that we're seeing, it's not only the increased mean temperature and the maximum temperature, that is the highs getting higher, but the lows are also getting more warm. They're not getting as cold as they used to get. This has a big impact on the vegetation and especially the other organisms that live in the forest like beetles, for example, as we saw in the 2014 episode of the bark beetle outbreak. When you have sustained warming for long periods of time, the reproductive cycles of those organisms can just go on overcharge, if you will, and more um, turnover in their populations, allowing for more beetles to um, impact the forest conditions and kill those trees. Across the West, as well as the world, we'll see, we're seeing increased temperatures and the reduction in relative humidity, less moisture in the air, influences fire activity. So all of these factors collectively, sometimes additively, that is together have a joint force or multiplicatively, they magnify or intensify the effects of one another, can really influence fire behavior, as we're seeing all throughout the West.